be it Captain America Civil War or Batman vs Superman, all aboard those hype trains. But really, what if your train hasn't come yet? Maybe you're not into the slow steam powered engines. Maybe your ticket to ride is for the efficient bullet train. But here's the thing, instead of going, I didn't like my first ride, why would I go on a second? The whole line is being judged based off one incident where a homeless guy locked eyes with you and started to wee in his seat across from you, with crumpled pages from also Sprech Zarathustra sticking out of his moth-bitten knit sock he uses as a hat. That kind of got heavy at the end, though the Nietzsche thing may have given away which train that guy was on. But honestly, isn't that really how the hype train works? They're not the same trains, and experiences will vary on them. Yes, I'm going to now explain how the MCU and the DCEU are trains. Yes, this is going to be a weird video that I wrote at 3 in the morning. As I sort of slammed Man of Steel first, let's do a bit of train spotting with the WBDC movies. The DCEU hype train is a steam-powered locomotive. They're built out of heavy materials, able to withstand a lot of problems, and when you get up to speed, you're a powerhouse. But it takes so much coal and fuel in the boiler to get up to speed. There's so much history and weight behind the characters, they're making films, and it's hard to have enough coal on board to get them to make a long haul. It's why the CW gets so much mileage, because they have enough stops to be able to refill on coal or water to do long hauls, with Arrow or The Flash or DC Legends of Tomorrow. But as times change, so do taste. What commuters, or the mainstream audience, want is a bullet train, which the MCU gave them. A bullet train is fast, it's efficient, and you can even look out the window and through the blur, see some truly fantastic sights for a few seconds. And who knows, maybe once someone came around with some drinks, and we'll call that the complimentary Loki service. But here's the thing, a bullet train is by far the most effective, but you can't really interact as you can on a steam locomotive. The largest difference between the MCU and the DCEU is simple. The MCU bullet train is streamlined for convenience, and with every movie that comes out, they add an additional car to it which may even fractionally bring down its speed, but it does give it a little bit of drag. Yet it's still the quickest way to beat traffic and it still looks so freaking cool. Whereas the DCEU steam train is meant for luxury. The cars are not so much built from their connected universe, but rather specific things. There's those that can talk and analyze over a glass of brandy in the lounge car. There's the open air car for those who want to feel the air and see some stunning sights. And there's even a car for people who just want to look back down the track on the characters and reminisce, not caring for the path forward. But both companies are not running a single train. They've got a whole line of engines ready and willing to go. The bullet train can go from one end of the country to the other, so there's very little need one replacement. But they have one, and it's just as good, if not better, yet they'll continue to Snowpiercer their train until even that second engine is just the caboose car. Yes, I'm aware that's not actually a factual statement, but I needed to work the second engine in, and that being Guardians of the Galaxy, it's going to be the other end of the two-headed snake by Infinity Wars. So, yeah. And the DCEU steam line has their specific trains, but it's not until after their initial rocky start. In that start, they were able to gauge the bumps in the track, the rattle of a few loose screws, and at the very least show they wouldn't blow up at station, unlike the Fantastic Four train car. Zing! But the DCEU train network, at least in how it's currently seen, is starting with a line of vehicles based off the result of their previous model. That lineup of models being what BVS basically is, a showcase of those models. But instead of keeping that train growing and growing and growing, they'll be selling their engines internationally, allowing for the one with the big cow catcher to be sold to a Kansas freight company, or having their vintage model sold off to a Board 30-something in Dubai, which for the company itself means great things that their product covers wide ranges and doesn't necessarily need to come together until after they've already established themselves. Okay, the metaphor may have been a bit complicated. Basically what I'm saying is that Marvel is growing into a Ouroboros and their Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy films are going to circle on each other for, for Infinity War. Meanwhile, I'm saying at least what at least we know about BVS and the films coming up is going to introduce them, but they're going to have their own films building to the Justice League movie while also existing previous. Sort of basically what Guardians of the Galaxy did in that they're a separate team and they exist now, but that film can lead into solo adventures. Okay? Okay. Back to trains, because why the hell not? And that's all not even pointing that each train is not a single mass. It's a ton of different parts working together to create a smooth ride. 
The basic foundation of that is how well the tracks are laid out. That's your rider. The rider lays the tracks out. It's the conductor's job to make sure the train goes forward, breaks around the corners just right so it doesn't flip off, and the ride generally goes smoothly as possible. It's sort of why a bullet train hitting a small imperfection on the track, say even a small plot hole, the train is still effectively going forward. And you may have a couple passengers go, oh, what was that? But ultimately, it doesn't impede the ride. However, in a hulking behemoth is the steam-powered train, you hit even the smallest bump, everything shakes. You'll feel like it's the end of the world as you know it. The coffee goes flying all over the person across from you's face. It's horrible. And it may take some time for you to get back into chatting about the subject of pants and how they pertain to Wonder Woman. Or you may never even feel easy riding again, and that's not a problem. Everyone has different tastes in trains and in comic movies. Our experiences are what shape our behavior on this world. So the broke guy begging for change because he took a fool's gamble releasing an album where mostly no one would hear it can harsh your enjoyment of the ride on either train. I don't know where Kanye got a train in this metaphor, but still. I think the moral to this whole metaphorical analogy thing is that be hyped for what you want to be hyped about, but just like you wouldn't want people to diss the people on Rainbow Railways, there's no need to make it any greater a problem than it's just not for you. Oh, and before I wrap this video, I want to say that Image Comics is probably the New York City subway system. You know, it'll get you from point A to point B eventually, but every time you step on, it's a new experience. Be it stepping on when there's a convention in town and seeing Sailor Moon with her hand on Darth Vader's lightsaber, with three Oompa Loompas watching on in sheer delight, or be it at 3 a.m. on Tuesday and you see a blonde crack whore with her hand on her dealer's lightsaber with three ungodly large rats ready to pounce and eat them in sheer delight. As for the rest of the comics, probably public buses. They're not nearly as bad as subways, but you'll still be able to find some truly great people, or some truly freaky people, on the bus. Oh, and I actually do officially want to end this video with, please support your local public transport, and don't forget, trains will always be cool. So please, do share this video around, it's an interesting take, and using this metaphor actually prevented a typical DC hate thread from doing what it do. Granted, you sort of had to be there for it to make full sense. Anyways, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe to the channel, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. If you want to see me cover a topic on these random comic vlogs, or if you just want to say how stupid I am for using trains as a metaphor, remember something. I've actually also compared nerddoms to major religions before, and may still do a video on that eventually. Or just leave a comment below saying that you think I'm kind of dumb and my editing sucks. Either way, leave a comment. I'm the archivist Braylon Nephilim, and stay golden, Inklings. What? No, no, I won't. Okay, just once for you, dick. The whistle goes woo! Jackass.